from the amusement park, if you call it that, that has been irrelevant up to this point, comes a pretty sick ride that will suddenly make everyone want to drive to the middle of nowhere to ride it. Switchback. You loved the traditional wooden roller coaster, at least until it got old and sucky, and loved it when RMC, GCI, and Gravity Group came out with more innovative ways to improve the woodies and make them more enjoyable and better than ever. These so-called next generation wooden coasters suck. They don't even feel like real wooden roller coasters. In fact, if they're built in the last five years, I won't even ride them. Okay, so you stick to riding those pain machines, and I'll be over here marathoning Outlaw Run. But I'm sure you'll be having more fun than I will. Now watch as innovation is taken to a whole new level, as finally a wooden roller coaster is created that goes backwards. Except, of course, for when Racer and Rebel Yell went backwards, but... You know, who cares about that? New at the park you've never heard of, smack dab in the middle of a random town, is the roller coaster type we've all been waiting for, a wooden boomerang. Which, as horrible as that sounds, it actually turned out pretty sweet. Wonder how they came up with the idea. Man, that was awesome. It was? We should buy one of those and stick it in the middle of nowhere. That is a terrible idea. Yeah, you're probably right. We should make it wooden instead. Have you been smoking something? No, no, it's brilliant. So should we get RMC to do it? No, no, that's too basic. Let's use a company no one's heard of, put it in the middle of nowhere, and not have it go upside down. Yeah, good luck with that, I'm out. These coaster designers just keep getting better and better. Designed by Gravity Group is an addition everyone, for the most part, forgot about, since that was the year Fury, Wicked Cyclone, Cannibal, Twisted Colossus, and Thunderbird all came out. So everyone forgot about, uh... Oh, wait, what are we talking about again? Switchback. Oh, right, 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 right. Sorry. Drive out to the town with a million different pronunciations and pull up at the park with the intention of riding Switchback and leaving, because that's probably what most people do. I mean, let's face it. What else they got? Mmm, no. No. Not worth it. Now nah, pass. Oh, definitely not. So, yeah, just switch back. I mean, switch back looked cool and all, but I just wanted to catch some Pokemon, yeah. Into the station and climb straight onto the coaster, since there's literally no one here, and board the ridiculously comfy Timberliners, which only hold up to eight passengers at a time. Which would be a major issue at any other park, but because they rarely get more than 30 guests at the park at a time, I see no problem with that. Plus, they got two trains, so it's more efficient. And, of course, they're only running one train. See, it's not just you, Six Flags. Climb into the train-themed trains, Trainception, and roll out of the station into a tight turn before beginning your ascent up the 63-foot-tall lift hill, giving you a great view of a couple sketchy gas stations. Turn into quite possibly the world's tightest turnaround before plunging into the small but powerful drop. Fly past the station in a stretch of straight track and get thrown into the first ejector airtime-filled hill before traveling into the part of the ride that makes this quite possibly the most compact coaster of all time. A bank turn through a random wall into a super steep curve which propels you back into the tiny hole of the sketchy building, which immediately causes you to put your hands down in fear of them getting chopped off because logically this ride shouldn't even be able to fit through there. After a nice pop of airtime, brace for the moment everyone's been waiting for. The steepest drop on a wooden roller coaster. Even though it's not really a drop and looked a lot cooler in the animations. Shoot up the obnoxiously steep spike at 87 degrees, because I guess 90 degrees was just too difficult to achieve. I was really looking forward to the steep angle, but I was in the back row, so I didn't experience it. Well, as true as this is, and really only the front row hits that, here's the beauty about this place. You can just get right back on and do it again. I decided not to ride Switchback today, because one, it's a wood coaster. Everyone knows that wood coasters are rough. And two, because the track just ends. Like, a car is probably thrown off at some point, and I'd rather not die today. Raise your hand if you hate the GP. Come on, come on, come on, you know. Oh, okay, there we okay. go. All right, good. Hit the maximum height and get a moment of weightlessness, sending you falling back down over the airtime hill and twisting back through that insanely tight building, which suddenly isn't as cool since you didn't even know you were in it until after it happened. Twist into the 104 degree banked curve which wasn't as fun as the first time around, and work your way back to the station and flying backwards into the brake, popping up into a small section of the drop before falling back into the final stop. I didn't realize that the switch track brought us back to the station, so I thought we were going to go back up the drop and take the chain lift back down. I... I, I can't... I don't... I... Why? Switch back track. Make the solo trip out there to ride it whenever you happen to be in San Antonio and have a couple hours to kill.